A Bulls and Bears, the collapse was just confirmed, or was it? <laughs> We're going to talk about it here. Uh, there are a lot of people pointing to some signs that uh, make it look like or seem like there's going to be a collapse, but it's not that simple, of course. We're going to give you the full breakdown, as we always do. Uh, we're going to talk about oil prices and more today. But first, let's go ahead and go to a chart right here. This is a recent chart, and it has to do with the unrealized losses at the banks. And it's an eye opener. Take a look at this here. Let me bring this up here. And this comes to us from Wolf Street. Wolf Street. And we see this. Let me go ahead and enlarge this because this is something that we want to get a good visual on here. And uh, we look to the right edge there and we see the current unrealized losses at these banks. And you see the huge red. Uh, down bars basically and the amount is 664 billion dollars now go back to 2007 2008 all the way to the left here and look how this compares to the financial crisis era of these unrealized losses at these banks so just looking at this chart you would think to yourself and, and a lot of people are and investors are also doing the same thing this is being shared on social media saying things like the collapse is going to happen no matter what and you look at this and you say it's it's got to happen this is awful i mean it, what is this 10 times maybe even 20 times worse than the financial crisis era uh, unrealized losses uh but here's the thing <laughs> and this is what i was saying at the very beginning it's not that simple it's all about the bailouts it's all about the bailouts we're living in an era now where losses don't matter. Sure, there's gonna be some bank failures, but if the deciders decide <laughs> uh, not to let certain big banks fail, and I'm sure you all know the names of, of the big banks that likely will not be allowed to fail, and that's Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, uh, the big ones, uh, City. Uh, it's all about the bailouts. It's all about the rescue programs. Again, go back to 2020, when the housing market should have imploded, the stock market should have crashed, by more than just the 40% that we saw, um, all, all these things, right? All these things that should have been deflationary or falling prices with the economy were completely flipped backwards or upside down, whichever way you wanna talk about it, um, to where it caused inflation and the cost of living went up, right? Normally when you see the economy shutting down, which we saw in 2020, the shutdowns, the lockdowns, uh, the closures, normally you see something like that that's massively deflationary. Now we did see it in oil for a brief period. Remember oil traded at zero for a minute. And we're gonna talk about oil here in just a few minutes and uh, kind of give you a picture of what's headed down the road here with, uh, with I think the economy and oil is gonna paint a picture of that. But you see what happened with oil. We did see a massive price drop, of course, then it recovered with all the money printing, the stimulus, the, uh, the cancellations of the rents, the foreclosures. Uh, you all know the story by now. So just seeing a chart, again, let me pull this up here, like this, you know, it's not as simple as looking at the, the amount of losses compared to 2008. It's not as simple as saying, wow, this is going to be a lot worse. Uh, it could be if the rescue packages aren't uh, enough <laughs> to, uh, to rescue these banks. But if you just look at the losses, I mean, technically with a hands-off economy and a free market, this would be the worst economic collapse that we've seen probably going all the way back to the great depression probably even much worse than that. i think most of you would agree uh, on the level of uh, propping up that we've seen the level of stimulus the money printing the, the rock bottom interest rates uh so it's not as simple as just looking at a chart i wish it was uh but then again if it was that simple uh we wouldn't have to do that many videos here to analyze this we could just do one video and say okay this is going to happen no matter what and we're done doing videos because we looked at a chart and it says what's going to happen, but we have to keep you updated on all the new programs, uh, what they're doing at the central bank, uh, how they're propping up certain markets. We know that uh, mortgage rescue packages are still in place right now. The most recent one was for the, uh, the veterans. And uh, what happened was the Veterans Administration uh, got a lot of backlash or bad press <laughs> about the um, all the thousands, it would have been thousands of veterans that were going to lose their homes. They were going to lose their homes here in the next few months because the delinquency rate was already surging 
what was it, about 4,000 or 6,000. Then there was another 34,000 that were already uh, delinquent, not defaulted yet, but already delinquent, right? So we had like 40,000 uh, potential uh, veteran families that were going to be foreclosed on here in the next few months. But what do they do? They came in and they, they rescued those people. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I don't want to see anybody on the streets at all. I wish we had zero homeless people, uh, especially veterans, uh, people that served the country. Um, but then the, on the flip side, if you're looking for prices to correct, if you're looking for the cost of living to come down, there has to be some pain involved first. There has to be a transition. Uh, there has to be you know, a fallout of some sort if you want the cost of living to come down. So right now we're seeing the, the quote unquote leaders, the powers that be afraid of deflation. They're afraid of this economic transition. They're afraid of any price corrections because of that temporary pain. But we need the temporary pain to, to get to a point where things are affordable for the cost of living to come down. You see what I'm saying here? Does this make sense? I hope it does. Um, now, why do the leaders not want that? Because it's not actually all the leaders' fault. You would think, oh, bad politician, bad politician. It's not that simple either. Let me explain. Because people don't look at things the way you and I look at it. You and, and people here on this channel, my viewers, and myself here included, we know the causes. We know the reasons behind this. Most people don't know this. They'll just blame who's ever in office. That's why I always say you can't fix things. Sorry. <laughs> I bumped in my mic. You can't fix things just by replacing one politician with another. That's not the solution, right? Because the people's perception of what's going on is the reason why these people, and we're talking about the leaders, why they do what they do. So when people think it's all about who's in office or which politician's running things, when people think that, and a lot of people do still think that, I know a lot of people on this channel you know, realize and can see that that's not, it's not that simple. But I think most of the United States, I'd have to say probably 90% plus, uh, still think it's, it's about that. So what's going to happen is if there is a correction, if, if free markets are allowed to uh, reign or take over, then whoever lets that happen is going to get the blame. Bad man, uh, the crash happened under your watch. You know, that's what 90% of the, the population would say. You are bad, you're bad, bad leader, bad politician. Uh, this crash happened under your watch without realizing that you have to have price corrections. You have to have deflation. You have to have uh, falling prices in some cases to get to a uh, time or get to a point where the cost of living is not so astronomical with all these housing bubbles, uh, automobile price bubbles, just the cost of living bubble. I mean, that's a bubble that I think no one's coined yet. They haven't coined the term yet, the cost of living bubble. Well, here's the thing. Is it a bubble if it's not allowed to deflate? <laughs> so if the bubble just keeps getting bigger, if the cost of living goes up nonstop, uh, is it a bubble? And you look back at the housing bubble from 2007, 2008, and everyone agreed after that, that it was a bubble. But now people are scratching their heads. They're saying, wow, prices are in some cases double, uh, in some areas double what they were back then. And we call that a bubble. Why aren't prices crashing now? Well, it's because of all the intervention, all the hands-on, all the programs. And yes, these programs help uh, temporarily, but they don't fix the problem in the long run. <laughs> so if we never see prices come down and the cost of living come down, you're going to have to have the constant need for rescue programs. And it's still going on right now with the veterans and uh, other sort of rescue packages and programs that are in place right now. We see the student loan uh, the pause that was put on the student loans for what three plus years and now in october uh we resumed student loan payments and already what was it 40 percent of students are already behind and it's just been less than two months less than two months we have about 40 percent of students already behind on their payments so what does that tell you that tells you that they're going to have to reintroduce the rescue program or do a massive debt forgiveness for the student loans otherwise there will be um consequences in the economy when you have all this uh the spending uh think about all these loans that have to be repaid and how much less the spending is going to be in the economy all right so let's transition a little bit here uh let's talk about oil prices here and this is in my opinion eye opening here with the demand in oil and i'll share it here in just a moment and first let's look at a five day chart 
and you look to the right edge here and recently you see a drop down from about $78, close to $79. Plunge down to $75 in one day. In one day. So at first you would say, okay, this is a drop off in demand. The economy is weakening. But remember, we were told that it was record holiday weekend travel with Thanksgiving and the holiday weekend. Uh, so if you believe that news is true, then you would have to say, well, there's not a drop off in demand. If we just set a new record for holiday travel, this is not about a drop off in demand. This is about some big traders getting out of their, their oil uh, positions. And of course, you see it drop and then correct a little bit back to about what, $77 going back down again here. So is it about demand or is it about some big insiders or whales uh, getting out of their oil positions? Are they selling off their, uh, their oil derivatives or their futures, uh, their calls, their contracts, right? So a lot of this is paper. Do you think it just dropped off because just in the past 24 hours, there's been a what is that about a 7% decline? Actually closer to 10%. You think there was that big of a drop off in one day where all of a sudden people stopped traveling? <laughs> of course not. Did you see the, the freeways empty uh, yesterday and the day before? All right. So this is not about just demand. This is about uh, what traders are doing. And these are derivatives. These are contracts. And we know that uh, the price of commodities right now is not just about real world demand. It's about what's happening um, on the digital platforms of trading. So traders, to me, this chart looks like traders are getting alarmed at some of the economic signals that are coming out right now. And I think a lot of people are going to be getting out early. Of course, the, the top 10%, the insiders, you know, they're the ones who typically get out early. You rarely hear about a billionaire losing all their wealth because of some market correction. Usually they're the ones, the first ones that get out early. Why? Because they're on the inside. They know exactly what's happening. Uh, they know not to trust the headlines. And um, you have 90% of the population that trust the headlines and they trust the business news networks. And then people scratch their head after the correction happens, if it's allowed to happen. I mean, that's a question to be seen in the coming months. But previously in, in the past here with market corrections, people were not given the heads up. They were not given a forewarning uh, there was a few bears out there or uh, there was a few alarming voices out there, or alarmist voices, you know, giving the heads up. But for the most part, you just watch the mainstream business networks. People were not tipped off to any previous economic downturn uh, on a large scale. Of course, there was a few people out there here and there that were allowed to go on air and talk about their bearish uh, view on the economy. People like Peter Schiff and a few others, but not many at all. Uh, we're allowed to go on air and talk about these things. Now let's go out here to a longer term view on the price of oil and analyze this and maybe see what's headed for us here in the next few months, right? So before the financial crisis, 2007, 2008, we saw a big spike. Now I remember this because I remember buying a six cylinder vehicle back when oil prices were uh, what 127 on this chart. I think intraday it was up even higher, but these are just the closing prices. But intraday, I believe it got to 130, maybe even 140, if I remember correctly. And people, nobody was buying six or eight cylinder vehicles. I went into a car dealer and got a uh, SUV, it was a six cylinder back then, it was a Honda Pilot. I got it for like 4,000 off of their asking price. I mean, it was dead. <laughs> no one wanted six cylinders or eight cylinders. Everybody wanted four cylinders and hybrids. Those were the things back then. Uh, hybrids and, and four cylinders. Uh, so we're seeing a spike now where we saw a spike. Let's see what we got up to. We got over $100 uh, in early 2022. Uh, recently up just over $80 with this mini spike here uh, back in September. And now we're dropping back down. Will we see another big spike up though before the huge deflationary drop, before oil drops to who knows, $60, $50? because of lack of demand and a combination of uh, big investment firms and traders getting out of their bullish oil positions. So that's what I see in this chart. I mean, please let me know what you think down in comments. Uh, oil can be definitely a good indicator of where the economy is headed. 
And we know that a lot of things right now are stacking up to um, lead to a pretty big downturn, especially when you look at the U.S. consumer and how much money they have left at the end of the month after their bills and expenses are paid. All right, let's go ahead and transition a little bit here into real estate, the housing market. Speaking of propping up and rescues, look at what's happening with mortgage rates here recently. We've got mortgage rates decline to 7.2%. Uh, they've fallen now for five weeks in a row. So the housing bubble is being uh, propped up. I mean, look at what's happening with the rates. So there's a big buyer in there buying up treasuries and pushing mortgage rates down. Who could that buyer be? Hmm, I don't know. The initials are probably those CB, and we're talking about the central bank, of course, uh, not wanting to have the housing market implode. We already see sales are at, what, a 30-year low. Uh, we've yet to see prices fully uh, engage in a downtrend. Uh, we did see an uptick here looking at the uh, with the case show or home price index. Remember, that's a three-month um, three month at a time snapshot of the market, so that's not the best gauge to look at here. Uh, but prices have been stubbornly high. Now with these lower mortgage rates, it could be uh, slowing down the rate of decreasing in home prices. Now, new home prices, that's something we have to talk about here because new home prices can be a very good leading indicator. And let me go ahead and pull up a chart here of what's happening with new home prices. New home prices have fallen from just under 500000 down to now about looks to be about 410,000 folks. That's a big drop. Um, what is it about 16, 18% just doing the quick math off the top of my head. So will new home prices again, be a leading indicator on what's happening with the economy and this housing bubble. Uh, again, please let me know what you think about this down in comments, but a 16 to 18% price correction in just a matter of uh, what less than two years, that's something big. And uh, will the same thing happen with existing homes? Well, again, we have to ask the question, what type of programs are going to be implemented to prevent prices from correcting? Remember, uh, the powers that be, they do not want price corrections because they're the ones that will get the blame because most people have no idea how all this works. People don't realize that we need deflation. We need falling prices. We need price corrections in order to get back to some realistic uh, cost of living. All right, it's as simple as that. But yes, there's a lot of pain. Uh, what happens when you see price corrections? You see falling prices. You also see massive job losses. And uh, of course, people will be mad. They'll be upset because maybe they lost their job or their friend or family member lost their job. And they're going to blame, again, the powers that be. But job losses need to happen when an economy corrects. It corrects for a reason. It means that the economy was in a overinflated or overheated environment that was in a bubble and that's why we need a correction all right but the uh corrections are a bad thing you know if you're uh someone in a position of uh, leadership right now because people just don't realize what's going on so what's going to happen well there could be something massively uh so big or so massive that it'll justify the market correction look at 2020 we're already hearing about a new health uh, situation coming out of China. And there's headlines here of uh, this hitting now the US. Let's just head over to uh, Drudge here real quick here. Mystery wave of child pneumonia hits America. Ohio hotspot, Denmark sees surge in white lung, white lung syndrome. Experts warn, prepare for the worst. Uh, hazmat suits return. Uh, this is eerily similar to 2020, if you ask me. Uh, those are the headlines. And also look at the time frame. It was what, late 2019, we started hearing about uh, the health crisis, the virus, and then what happened in early 2020. So will early 2024 be more face coverings, more lockdowns? Uh, and that would be the reason for more stimulus and to drop interest rates. You see where I'm headed here? Uh, I hope I'm wrong, uh, and I hope that uh, what I'm reading here is just, um, you know, kind of alarmist headlines, you know, out of Drudge and a lot of other news outlets that are talking about this. I'm hoping that this is not what it seems like it is or what it looks like it is. 
Uh, again, please let me know what you think down in the comments. I'll be reading your comments. I learn from a lot of you down there, a lot of very smart people down in my comments here on this channel. Uh, so thank you to all of you for being here, for commenting, for liking these videos, for, for sharing these videos, uh, and just for watching. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be looking at your comments here on this channel. As always, we're going to wrap it up here with a peace out and keep stacking, everybody. Um, please share these videos or at least talk about these things with your friends, with your family members. So people are aware of what's going on here, what's happening and how this thing really works. We're talking about the economy, how um, the economic downturn is being delayed or how the can is being kicked down the road. Uh, what seems like endlessly, uh, they're paving new road. Or maybe we're down a dirt road at this point. <laughs> maybe we're off the, the paved road and we're into the dirt. We're onto the two track. Uh, for those of you that lived in the country, you know what the two track is off uh, out in a field somewhere. Uh, that you drive. All right, everybody. I've talked it off here. We're going to wrap it up. Happy, what is today? Happy Thursday to everybody. We'll talk to you very soon, likely tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Peace.